Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Shit Moms Won't Say. My guest tonight is an internationally renowned author and grief expert. Her memoir, The Rules of Inheritance, has served as a sounding board for so many people to look their own experience with grief in the eye and is currently optioned, I don't know, no big deal, for a TV show. Mom of three, although we'll talk about that, Claire Bidwell-Smith. Hello. Hi, thanks for having me. You're you're so welcome. Thank you for coming here and doing this. And, um, you know, I don't think people know this about you. You just made me laugh two seconds ago. It's sort of hard to make me laugh. I said, you know, mom of three, right? You said, well, yes, not being a mom of six, but you said, but I didn't, what did you say to me? What was, what was the exact, I'd like the line for like the promo. I'd like it very much. You asked if, if you should say I was a mom of six or three and I, I hesitated and partly it's because I didn't, um, spit all six out of my vagina. Three of them are my ex husband or my husband's ex-wife's children. Then she did that work. Um, so I feel like I can't really take that credit sometimes. I will say you are the first guest that I've had to use the term spit it out of your vagina. So thank you <laughs> very much for bringing that to the table because we are going to talk about like your career in grief. So to start it off there, I think is <laughs> I think it's very good. I think we're off to a hell of a start. So awesome. let's get into big mom three and then we'll chat about a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay. So first question, I'd have interruptions uh, with my dog or my toddler and just my crazy life. <clears throat> Shit moms won't say, don't worry about it. There's a, my kid could wake up at any second. My wife could go into labor at any second. My house is under construction. Don't fucking worry about it. Awesome. I promise. <laughs> first question to big mom three. Uh, did you always know you wanted to be a mom? No, I never wanted to be a mom. I wanted to be a writer. Yeah. A mom. I definitely didn't want to be a mom. I told my first husband on our first date that I didn't want to be a mom. I was like, you need to know this about me because he seemed like he wanted to be a dad. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to be a mom. I want to write books. I want to travel. Like what, 14 months later, I was pregnant Honestly, on purpose. But like, I don't know what happened. I just like, I was like, we should have a baby. That's what I say. So like it was, but it wasn't just like, oh, whoopsie. Like all of a sudden you're like, okay, I want to have a baby. Yeah. It just really, I don't know, like a hormonal, cultural, I don't know what was going on, but uh, yeah, now I've got six. How it happens. I didn't want kids either. That's like a very common answer. And I've like, so this show has been around year and change. And I'm surprised more people answer that question with like a resounding no. And then they're like, but awesome. then I decided blah, blah, blah. Because like, that was part of the reason that this show started. I was like, I never wanted to be a mom, but now I'm like, oh, I really enjoy being a mom. Yeah, I have no idea, but like lots of women. And I think it's people that have like this idea of their career and what they want to do and what their life looks like. And it just doesn't fit in. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, it could. And then it does. Yeah. And then it does. I've never felt like I fit in as a regular mom. I have never felt like a regular mom. Um, and I still show up and pick up every day with cookies and stuff. And, but I just don't feel like a regular mom. I feel like I missed some, um, book that everybody else read or something or probably like 40 of them but you know you're just writing nuances so, so it's fine it all works out uh second question big mom three what is the uh, like shittiest or most backhanded piece of advice or comment you've ever gotten from another mother or parent it's a good one the very first one that comes to mind is when my former mother-in-law, who I think is a very lovely woman still, but she said to me after my first daughter was born, my first baby, she said, um, I don't remember crying this much when I had my babies. And, you know, for me, like to segue into the grief a little bit, I lost my mom at 18. And when I became a mom, it was really like this just watershed of full circle emotions and you know this big realization of why i missed my mom so much still and i and i cried a lot you know when i had that and um and so that felt very hurtful to me you know it is for hurtful. lots of reasons like i think it's kind of shitty in general to say to any kind of new mom but you know i just felt i think it's hard to understand grief a lot of the time, I think when we're grieving, we feel very alone. And that was just a yet another thing that made me feel so alone in my loss. That's interesting. It, yeah. That, that's like a really, um, yeah, I, I get that. That's it's everyone on my channel. So like, I, I don't talk to my 
parents. They are alive. I don't talk to them, but this, you know, this is the baby that we're having that they don't know about, mm-hmm. you know? So it's been very hard. like, yeah, it's, been, it's, very it's, hard. Hard. it's the right decision. That, that stuff hard. is still really hard, you know, but you're like all of a sudden, oh, I'm doing this thing without this factor that's always been there. And, you know, like this, I said, you like, you know, your grief stems from death. And like, we'll talk about, there's so many different types of grief, um, but grief is grief is grief is grief, right? Like and facing it sucks and it sneaks up on you and it just bites you in the ass. And you're like, oh, this whole thing, this is still happening, huh? You know, so yeah. Re- yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's a good description. <laughs> Thank you for doing a lot of inner child work. Um, <laughs> third question, the big mom three. What is um, a skill or superpower you had before becoming a mom that you think has really helped you as a mom? Mm, um, such a good question. I feel like my, my lack of judgment Um, which sounds lofty, but I really feel like one of the things my mom did that I thought was great was she, she just, she always made space for me to tell her anything. And like last night, my daughter dropped some bombshell on me and I just really, it's why I became a therapist. It's translated into motherhood where I just, I just listen. You know, I think a lot of parents freak out a, a lot when their kids say something weird or they don't understand or shocking. And I've just, I really try to meet it with like, okay, we're all trying to figure out this human experience. Maybe I don't even, maybe you have better answers than I do. Let's, let's hear what's going on. Sure. Um, yeah. I feel like that's been helpful. Wow. And what, what are the ages of your kids? What's the breakdown? Um, my oldest who um, is a, they, them is uh, 13, almost 13. And then I have a nine-year-old daughter and then I have um, a three-year-old son and then I have three stepkids and um, two teen daughters and a teen son. So they're all like 18, 16, and 14. That's a lot of teenagers. It's all the way, 18 down to three. So we're like about to graduate high school and still in diapers. <laughs> a lot of energy in general. Yeah. A lot of energy. Well, so, you know, and I, like I said you before we started filming, the way that I uh, stumbled upon you, I shouldn't say stumbled because we have a lot of like mutual people that we've spoken to and sort of know, but the way I started following you was there's this great conversation with Billy Lord, who, you know, you are, we're going to talk about that in a second, but Billy Lord, who is this incredible actress and, and public figure. And you had this great chat around generational trauma. And obviously, you know, Billy Lord's lost her, you know, grandmother was super impactful. Her mother was super impactful. Um, but you talked a lot about like this idea that grief comes in so many forms, right? Like it's, people sometimes say, oh, I'm, I'm grieving the loss of, well, you're not, it, it doesn't have to be a person who's passed. Right. So I guess my question for you and this, you know, speaking of lofty, right. Like as a therapist and as a grief expert, I have a lot of people on here who deal with grief every day, myself included, mm-hmm. you know, what, what are some of the, like, what's the starter pack, right. If you're <laughs> like, here's the meme, the grief starter pack of starting to look grief in the face, what's the starter pack. Yeah. I mean, I think just opening up to it in general, we push grief away so much and we deny it and we don't recognize it. The last couple of years have been of the pandemic have been so difficult for multiple reasons on many levels, but there's been a lot of positives. And and one of them is that we've really, I think as a culture, recognized that there are so many ways to grieve and there are so many things we can grieve. You know, we were grieving initially as I remember seeing all these articles like, is it grief you're feeling? And it was like, yes, it is. Um, and it and was you're like, let me write about it. Yes. Thank you. And you're grieving please. this way of life you were living. You're grieving your job gone. You're grieving your kids home from school. You're grieving a wedding you were going to go to. And yes, we grieve all of that stuff. We really do. It's real grief. And I get frustrated with people who want to compare. Well, you know, Mo, my grief doesn't really compare to that one or it's not as big grief is grief you know and i think we need to feel it it's a process that's there for a reason we need to move through it we need to open up to it but i think it's sometimes scarier and more unwieldy than people anticipate and so they're not sure how to how to go about it um i think a lot of people feel like if they open up to their grief they're just going to fall apart and for those of us who are maybe in busy throes of our lives with kids or families or careers or whatever it is, um, that can feel really scary. So I think it's important to find support for it. I think grief looks like different things. It can look like anger. It can look like anxiety. You know, it can look like depression. It can look like all of it at once. You know, uh, there's a lot of different uh, different experiences of it. But grief is an important process. Like it's not always a horrible thing. It's hard. 
but it's transformative. It asks us to look at ourselves, our relationships, our lives, like what's important to us. There's a lot of opportunity within grief. And I think when we deny it, that's when we start to get really tripped up. I love that. And you know, I, I, and I wonder if I'm sure you do find this way, but I wonder if you do like, I feel like people are very scared to use the word grief, almost as if like, they're going to offend somebody who like, well, you're grieving, you know, you're grieving, like my, like it's the comparison, right? Like they don't want to call it there. They're, you know, I'm anxious. I'm sad. I'm this, like saying I'm grieving sort of regardless of what you're grieving is this really big word. And like, I find that people are just nervous to say it. Once you say it, you're in a process. Yeah. Right? That makes sense. But I just, I think, I think we have to get better at recognizing all the different levels and layers of grief. You know, grief is about loss. Loss is about change. Change is about uncertainty. All of those things we're going through all the time, you know, and the pandemic was a great example of how we all think we're, we know what's going on. And then suddenly the rug gets pulled out from underneath us. And we realize that there was never anything certain to begin with. And that's our life on a daily basis. And when it gets upended in little ways and big ways, we grieve and that's okay. It's important. It's healthy. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it, it's a good answer. And like, I, you know, like I said, lots of people that, that follow the show and sort of follow my channel do uh, you know do struggle with lots of different mental health issues and, and talk about it very freely. And I think it's it's like a permission, right, to hear somebody say like it's okay to talk about grief. It's okay to say the word grief. Uh, it's always just very reaffirming and very validating. So I love sure. that answer. Also, if you don't read your own audio books, I'm going to be furious. Because Thank you. I like, read all of them. <laughs> okay, good, because you have like the perfect voice for audio books. I'm sitting here and I was like, does Claire want me to take a nap? <laughs> I was like, that's how, well, that's why people become therapists. Like I couldn't be a therapist. People would be like, shut up. Stop. Your voice is not true at all. I know people who have grading voices and yours is not one of them. <laughs> you want to come with me while I change my son's cartoon? Of course I do. Everett, what, what would you like to watch now? Blaze. You want to watch Blaze. Okay. We had the opportunity to watch Blaze earlier and you changed your mind. Do you want to say hi? This is Everett. Hi, Everett. Hello. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Netflix. This is like the best commercial break we've ever taken. This is really good. Yeah, I thought maybe it would be better if I just brought you with me. It's yeah. very immersive. It's excellent. <laughs> it's perfect. And those, it are, like those are all my perfect. books up there. Look at that. Those are all the copies of my first book, The Rules of Inheritance. Love That's it. the one that Billy and I are working on together. And look at that. That's a perfect segue. What I was going to say before that segue, though, is you do not have anything on Ms. Zibby Owens, though, with her book organization. No, that's true. I, I know she's got those really serious color coded things and I am not I'm not color coded at all. Oh, yeah. Blaze is not on Netflix. It's on Prime. I don't even know what, what is um, Blaze. I don't know. I have a two-year-old. Shouldn't I know that? To find these things. Um, I'm on a record, Ralph. Kim. I actually, I just, uh, I just signed a deal with Zippy for my fourth book. I have, I'm writing a follow-up to my first book, and it's going to be called. My first book is called The Rules of Inheritance, and my new book that Zippy's going to publish next year is called The Rules of Forgiveness. Oh, I love it! Cool. Yeah. She's a She's a star, Zippy Owen. She's a powerhouse. She's a, she's a powerhouse. She's a something. But that's a really good segue. So you are working on a TV show, which is so cool, with Billy Lord, who is so cool, like amazing. You know, what does that like bring up for you? Is it exciting? Is it nerve wracking? Like it's a big piece of your life that's going to be potentially what you're doing right now on Netflix. You know, like yeah. that's crazy. It's very exciting. Um Hold on. Here we go. Find I got blaze. blaze. Yeah. Fine blaze. Go for it. I got it. I'm not getting you another ice cube right now, but I will in a bit. Let mommy work for a minute. Okay. My kid is obsessed with ice cubes. Obsessed yeah. all day. Mama ice, mama ice. I'm like, what do you want ice for? Um, yeah, I'm super excited to be working with Billy on this project. Um, she has gone through so much of her own loss and mother loss and, She's just, um, she's an incredible person. She's so young, but she's so grounded. She's so funny. She's so real. She's really smart. She just became a mom. Um, she's got the sweetest little guy. And we have just been sitting at her house and working on writing the pilot together. And she nurses her kid. And sometimes I bring mine. And we just work on this. And it's really great. But um, 
Yeah. I mean, it just feels like a really important time more than ever to talk about grief. And she gets to talk about grief in a way that doesn't have to be so personal, but also can bring a lot of her personal to this project. So it's pretty neat. That's so cool. Congratulations. And like, Billy freaking Lord. I don't know anybody that like doesn't love her. Right. She's, like, amazing. I don't, she's amazing. Like she's one of those people that they're like, oh, Billy Lord's in that show. I'll watch it. <laughs> like, I don't even have to like the show. She's in it. Like I'll watch it. So that's, that's really, really cool. And I know you have a couple other things like grief certification, lots of cool stuff going on. So like, I pump do. it up, man, do it. What are you doing? Um, I have a podcast called new day. That's what Billy was on. So you can listen to that episode there. And that's about all kinds of mental health and how do we make our lives better in small ways, big ways. I like to talk to interesting people and figure out how they got through hard stuff. Um, and then I'm offering a grief certification training now for professionals who want to deepen their understanding of grief and provide service of grief to people, grief and loss. So again, it's just that this last couple of years, not only are people going through a lot of grief, but again, we've really recognized that grief is everywhere. It's happening all the time. We need to make space for it. We need to talk about it. We need to help people move through it. It's just, um, it's so important to do that. So I'm trying like on all the ways I'm writing three new books about grief, working on this TV series, offering the training, doing the podcast. You got a lot of shit going on. Raising the kids. (laughs) You got a lot of stuff to do. You got to take a nap. Oh, please. (laughs) That would be crazy. Before we wrap it up with the kids. And that's one thing I love about Billy is that she's like, she's just like me. I just have always dragged my kids to everything. I just, I don't want, I've never wanted to like separate my work life too much or, or just spend more time on my work. I think a lot of having a dead mom, I have this like built in like abandonment fear that I'm going to abandon them somehow. So I just bring them everywhere. And Billy's been like that too with her son. And so it's been pretty fun. That, you know, and it's so like, it's funny. I was just going to ask you like, as my, as a follow-up, so like I shared, like, I don't, you know, I've grieved my parents my own way, but they're alive. Like I get very infuriated when people like misuse terminology about certain things like narcissism and toxicity and those types of things. And, um, but what you just said in terms of like, I have, you know, this dead mom, you know, sort of anxiety. Mm-hmm. I, my daughter tried to show me something yesterday and I like, wasn't paying enough attention to her. In my mind, she was fine. She was too. And I was a fucking train wreck about it later in the day. I was like, because I was neglected and now I'm neglecting her. And what if she thinks I'm going to leave her and that I'm not going to love the like mental path I do with that stuff. It's crazy. It's out of nowhere. It's crazy. But my question that I was going to ask was like, grief is, and I think grief, like the terminology should be used more because it really is like a very broad term. But you ever get a little pissed off when people use it as a like, well, I'm grieving or like that person's a narcissist and you're like, no, they're not. If they say it in that voice, yes, I'll go. Right. That (laughs) That, like Kardashian, like, oh my God, I think I'm grieving my nail color. Um, Like, yes. No, I mean, I mean, I would almost rather people overuse grief than underuse it because I think we underuse it. It really does such a disservice. And I feel like I saw a lot of grief shaming the first year of the pandemic where somebody would talk about something they were grieving and then everybody on social media would jump on them and be like, people are dying. You can't grieve like that wedding you missed. And I'm like, they can grieve the wedding they missed. They absolutely can. It's grief is grief. You only know your own grief. Like judging other people's grief seems pointless. I say, let's be grief curious, like be curious about other people's grief, ask them questions about it. What does it feel like to grieve your nail color? Like whatever, you know, we don't know everyone else's experience in the world. We always need to be learning more. I like grief curious. You should write a book called grief curious. (laughs) I might need to. The next one's called conscious grieving, which is kind of along that vein. Okay. Grief curious, trademark, beautiful. I love it. Wonderful. All right, let's start dropping up. I have two final questions for you. So you have a whole gaggle of children in all varying ages. And I love this question because it really changes depending on how old or young kids are. You have the whole spectrum of age children. What is something with your children at their current ages that you cannot live without? Like an item? 
I've had people be like wine and you're like okay but like whatever like I've had people say music I like whatever whatever pops in your head what's the thing that you're like I would literally drop this without this patience patience <laughs> Patience. Okay. Like yeah. every day I need more patience, you know? You don't want to it's explain why he can't have ice for every meal of the day. You don't want to do that. And it's that patience with yourself though, too, you know, where like we fuck up all the time as moms. So having that kind of grace and compassion and patience for ourselves and for them, none of us are doing this thing right. Like, you know, no, I, I spent enough time thinking I was like not a good enough mom that I've given up on that. And I think we're all good enough, you know? I do. I do. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Final question. This is like, this is probably the biggest question that I ask. And some people are like, Ooh, what is something, you know, now that you wish you knew before becoming a mom? Hmm. How great it would be. I mean, I just really, really didn't think I was going to like it. Like I was very worried even all the way up until like week 40 of pregnancy. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is, I don't, I don't think I'm going to like it. And I love it. It's like the best thing I've ever done. It's so fucking hard and it's such a mess and it's so awesome. Also by week 40, you're just like, get the fuck out of me. Get out. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. Oh, good luck to your wife. Thank you. I was like, with Claire and I were emailing before. She's like, we still on for eight. And I was like, absolutely. Here's where I am right now. When I was in a doctor's appointment with my wife and I was like, she's either going to go into labor or it's going to run late or I will be on time and we're fine. Um, she's not in labor. It did run a little late and I was on time, but we're at like week 37, but by week 40, so she's going to burn the house to the ground. It's <laughs> it, she's done. I understand. She's done. Week 40 is crazy. You went 40 weeks, full 40? Went to 41 with all three and I had all oh. natural births with all three. This last guy was 10 and a half pounds too. No epidurals with any of them. I like to just do life all the way. Like, <laughs> all it up. You're just like a very extreme person. Wow. Okay. Well, listen, it's always nice to meet another very extreme person. Where <laughs> can people find you? Where can they follow you and follow all of the amazing stuff you're doing? Um, sorry if you hear my noisy pug. The yeah, easiest place is my website. It's just clairebidwellsmith.com. I'm on all the social media. Um, Instagram is my favorite place to be. So you can find me there. Perfect. And we'll, of course, tag everything out. So it makes it real, real easy to find Claire. Uh, but thank you so much for being thank here. You. It was a treat talking to you. So and thank, thank you for having patience with me. And my oh, please. Like you said, we, have to have, we have to have patience. But I didn't feel like I needed to have patience with you. It was very fun to talk to you. <laughs> Likewise. And thank you guys for tuning in to Shit Miles Won't Say. Uh, we'll see you next week.